Okay, so we are uh, in this book here, Causal Inference and Statistics. Uh, we're in Chapter 1, and we're on Question 1.36, and it's a two-parter. So uh, we'll tackle them one at a time. So in the first part, we're going to prove uh, that in general, uh, the covariance, sigma xy, and the correlation, coefficient, rho xy, vanish when x and y are independent. Then use the equations 1.16 and 1.17 in the book. Okay. Um, so, uh, in a way, um, it should make sense that the, that the covariance and the correlation should vanish when X and Y have no covariance or correlation, right? So, that's just almost a tautology, but we can actually go through and prove it. Um, so, uh, so, first, I'm just uh, putting up uh, the definitions for sigma and rho as given in earlier in the chapter. And the way that I'm going about this is I'm going to expand sigma xy, okay? And so you can go through the math here. Hopefully I haven't put a parenthesis or a bracket in the wrong place. Um, but when you expand this, so if you're not familiar with how to expand expectation, um, there's quite a few uh, intuitive rules about it, but let's just go through a few. So here I have the expectation of this entire term here, which is x minus the expectation of x and y minus the expectation of y. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of do the FOIL method. So xy, x times the negative uh, expected value of y, so on and so forth. And so then what I get is I'm keeping this expectation, okay? And then, I, and then everything in that major bracket expands into this. And now I can start to distribute this expectation operator, right? So I have expectation of xy goes here. Then I have the expectation of the expect expectation y, x. Okay, so we, I distribute the expectation over each of these terms. Okay, and then again I'm going to distribute expectation terms when it's uh, looking at or when it's referring to more than one term. So this expectation refers to the expectation of the expectation of y and, and x. Okay, and so that's getting distributed. Okay, so I have the expectation of the expectation of y times the expectation of x. And I just do that for each term, all right? Well, now this right here, the expectation of an expectation is just the expectation. So these types of terms simplify to that or to those types of terms. Okay, so now I'm simplifying. And then what we get at the end is that this term is equal to this term, even though the y and x are transposed, is equal to this term. So I have two negative expectation of x times expectation of y and one positive expectation of x, expectation of y. So I subtract the two of those uh, from this one. And so now I have the expectation of x, y is just one of these terms here. Okay, so that's how we get there. All right, so now we've got to take a quick detour. And, um, and uh, so if we assume that x is independent of y, as uh, kind of... Uh, allowed for in our in our question or suggested by our question okay well then the pro then the joint probability of x and y is equal to the probability of x times the probability of y and then that has these consequences for the expectation of x y which again is this term right here okay so um so now i think that you could probably do this without much instruction but all i'm doing is substituting the joint uh, probability for the independent probabilities, right? Because that's that's what it is to be independent, for two variables to be independent. And then this breaks down just into the product of the expectation of x and expectation of y. So now I can take that, substitute it here, right? Well, this is this, and so I have it, and I subtract it away, right? So I just have, I just have this, and then I subtract it, and that's zero, right? So our covariance is zero, and then notice that, that the formula for rho is the covariance over the standard deviation of x and the times the standard deviation of y. So the numerator is the thing that we just found, which happens to be zero. And so there, there we've we've shown that uh, that the coefficient correlation or that the correlation coefficient as well as the covariance of x and y disappear when x and y uh, are independent. Okay. Um, so in the next part, we need to give an example of variables that are highly dependent. 
but their correlation coefficient vanishes. Okay, so I, I have an example here, and, the, and you could come up with a lot of different examples, um, but the important thing to whatever we do here uh, is just that rho is a measure of linear dependency, okay? And so if we have nonlinear relationships, which, which is what I've used here, but if we have nonlinear relationships, then what happens is we can have, uh, all of a sudden, the correlation coefficient is not a great indicator of the association between variables. Because if, that, if the association between, say, x and y is nonlinear, well, that doesn't really, that doesn't mean that the linear dependency tells us much about their relationship. So what I am using here is I'm using the relationship y equals x squared where x is a uniform distribution between any two symmetrical bounds. And here I'm just taking negative 1 and 1 just to make the math easier. Okay, um, so, uh, so notice that y and x are more than highly dependent. They are completely deterministic. Okay, They are equal to, like, like x squared is equal to y and vice versa. Okay, So th this is a highly dependent relationship. So first let's just find the covariance of x and y. So, so uh, earlier I found that the covariance of x and y breaks down into this. Right, so even though we have this big expression here, when we simplify it, we get this. Okay, so I'm just putting that back here. Okay, so um, now uh, these, this probably looks a little bit scary right here, but all this is, uh, is this is the expectation of x and y. Okay, um, so, uh, and so to find uh, expectation, oh, that should actually, well, sorry. Um, anyway, I, I, I've, I've omitted the probability term, but remember that the uh, that the um, that we can find expectation with a formula like this, right? The value times the probability of that value over all such values, right? So anyway, so that that's what we have there, um, and uh, so we go through all of this. So that's the expectation for x and y when y equals x squared. That's the expectation of x. This is the expectation of y. Okay, um, so. This term right here, the expectation of x, is 0. The expectation of y is actually 2 thirds, but uh, we're multiplying it by 0, so that becomes 0. And then over here, x times x squared, well, that's just x cubed. Okay? And the expectation of x cubed uh, between negative 1 and 1 is 0, so we get 0. Okay, uh, that is it.